Lesson on Waves in Two Dimensions, the Ripple Tank. Water waves are produced by a disturbance in the water, whether you're using that dowel or poking your finger in the water to produce waves. The frequency of the waves produced is the same as the frequency of the, dis the disturbance. And hence, the velocity of the water waves is determined by the medium. In this case, it's the depth of water. All throughout our ripple tank activity, we kept the depth of water constant. Let's see these waves in action. Here we have low frequency waves. And we can observe the long wavelength between crest to crest. If we increase the frequency, let's see what happens to the wavelength. There we can see the wavelength is much shorter now, and I can measure it from crest to crest as shown. Reflection of water waves. When we take an incident wave, that is a wave that has yet to undergo a behavior and have it moving towards a barrier, it is reflected straight back, just as in fixed end reflection in a one-dimensional wave. Let's check it out. Here we see our waves produced going straight and being reflected straight back. Let's see that incident wave one more time. Here we see our incident wave traveling in this direction. And as we can then see, the reflected wave is traveling straight back in this direction. But what happens if we take a wave incident to a barrier at an angle? How is that wave reflected? Well, it's reflected off at the same angle and obeys the law of reflection. Let's take a look. Here we can see these waves traveling towards the barrier and reflecting more to the right. Let's slow it down and label the incident wave and reflected wave and their respected angles. Here's our incident wave headed towards the barrier. We draw in the direction of propagation perpendicular to the direction of the or to the plane of the wave. Let's sketch the ref reflected wave now. Here we can see the reflected wave moving off in this direction to the right, away from the barrier. Now how do we measure those angles, the angle of incidence and angle of reflection? Well first we have to draw in what's called a normal line, which is perpendicular to the barrier. Now we can sketch in our relative angles. Since this is our incident wave, this will be the angle of incidence, or theta i. Since this is our reflected wave, this will be the angle of reflection, or theta r. And the law of reflection states that these two angles are always equal. Diffraction. This is a new concept that we can see with waves in two dimensions. This occurs when a wave travels around or between barriers. Thus, the wave spreads out or changes shape as it travels through the opening. Let's take a look at diffraction in our video to the left. As you can see, the wave gently curves on the edges as it goes through the opening. Here are the incident waves about to travel through the opening, and we can see that as they go through, they gently curve as they pass through that opening. So we say that these waves are diffracted and start to spread out as they go through that opening. But what happens if we reduce the size of the opening as in the setup on the right. Well, those waves will be diffracted more. Let's take a look. As you can see, the waves become even more circular or more diffracted through this smaller opening. Here are incident waves about to travel through our smaller opening. And as you can see, these waves become even more circular as they travel through the opening. We say these waves are even more diffracted as they change shape even more and spread out through the opening. You should also notice through other observations that the amount of diffraction depends on how the wavelength of the wave compares to the size of the opening or slit width. More on that in class. Interference and standing waves. This occurs when two waves continuously interfere, both constructively and destructively. Recall, we need two waves to meet. 
In our string app, we saw two crests meeting to make a bigger crest constructively or a crest and a trough meeting to interfere destructively. To do that in the ripple tank, we'll look at double slit diffraction. Thus, we'll need two openings in order to produce two circular waves. So we look here on the left, our ripple tank, we have two openings. And we'll take some incident waves and have them approach those openings. As they approach that, they're going to spread out in different directions. So we'll have waves spreading out through slit A, or we'll call those waves A, and then waves diffracting through the opening in B, we'll call those waves B. As these two waves spread out through the ripple tank, it's inevitable that a crest from wave A will interfere and meet with a crest from wave B, and thus constructively interfere. How will that look exactly in the ripple tank? Well, if we look to the right, Here's a great picture of standing waves in a water tank. Here we can see areas where the waves are constructively interfering. These would be called the antinodes of the standing wave, where crests are meeting crests and troughs are meeting troughs from these two waves from the two openings. So again, this entire area right here is an antinode region. And you can see many antinode regions in this standing water wave. But there's also places where you don't see any waves, these lines between those antinodes. Since there are no waves there, that amplitude is zero, and that must be areas of destructive interference, places where crests from wave A meet troughs from waves B, or vice versa. Here we really have a line of nodes, or what we call a nodal line, places where the waves are destructively interfering. So you can see in this diagram that we have places where the waves are constructively interfering, destructively, constructively, destructively, and it's an alternating standing wave pattern set up in the water. We'll take a look at this more closely in class. Thank you for watching and see you in class.